Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hi, I'm Larry. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm Dominica. And I'm Josh. And Dominica, welcome back to the panel. Thank uh, you. Dominica's often behind the camera. Mm -hmm. Today she is filling in on the panel. Uh, and today we are going to be going over a short story written by Karen Russell called Black Corfu, which made its debut in the Zoe Trope, which is Francis Ford Coppola's uh, literary magazine. And it was uh, released in the Best American Short Stories of 2019. This uh, Heidi Pittler is the main editor, Anthony Doerr, from All the Light We Cannot See. Yeah, he wrote that one. Uh, was the uh, guest editor. The discussion starter that I have for this is, do you feel that there was a significance in making this short story supernatural? Would making it general have a different effect? I wouldn't say that it was supernatural, it was superstitious. <laughs> I, I mean, it pretty much comes out and says it eventually when they say that uh, the these uh, zombies, I guess, walk on Earth after <laughs> death. In time, these superstitions will fall away, mm -hmm. but for now, you know, these, this is what people thought, so, I mean, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that it is really, it's not, it's not very yeah. supernatural. Well, the part, I kind of disagree a little bit with that, only because he, so, at least so it says, he turned into one at the end, so I was kind of following it up until that point where, okay, it was all a lie, like, the student, the student made the whole thing up to, you know, get back at the doctor for whatever reason. But then in the end, after he killed himself and woke back up, he had become the very thing that he was defending that he never created in the first place. Mm. And then he ended up becoming it himself. Mm -hmm. So that's why it does seem a little bit more supernatural to answer your question. Hmm. I... I didn't get the last paragraph. Thank you for. Uh, yeah. I didn't know what was going on here. It's like, why is he in it all of a sudden? I didn't. I didn't understand. He turned into whatever kind of zombie it was. Yeah. But again, to answer your question, I feel like it making it supernatural played a role. As for it making it effective, I think it would have been just as effective if they didn't do that. But it would have been a different kind of effective. I so I took that whole last bit as more of like a. Um, a realist kind of dream state that maybe he didn't necessarily turn into it but as he was dying he realized like I'm a monster because that's what they make me out to be like mm -hmm. I maybe I'm not actually a monster but society sees me as I think that it, I think that Jesse makes a good point because uh, he had the opportunity to do bigger and better things with his uh, uh, practices uh, but uh, he was relegated because of his background he was he was black and uh, it's a different country, but he was still subject and to regardless prejudice. of what he had done or how much good he did, they still saw him as somebody yeah. different. Um, and so he would always be somebody different, mm -hmm. which isn't a very uplifting story or anything. I mean, I feel like this can be taken out of because this was written in 1620, I found. That's so, when it was set. Or, I'm sorry, set in 1620. So you could even, like, take that out and put it anywhere else in time, mm -hmm. and it would still apply, mm -hmm. um, or at least to a degree. Mm -hmm. not horrible for his circumstance. He just mm -hmm. wanted to be a normal doctor. I mean, mm -hmm. because of his skin color, he wasn't allowed to, and it's just... He, was, he, pretty, he had to teach another person who uh, ended up uh, ratting him out. You know, when I was reading that, it reminded me of another book I read that was actually by the same author that wrote The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, which I didn't know. John Boy. Yes. I read a book by him. I didn't know it was the same author until after I finished it. Um, but the student reminded me of the character in the book called A Ladder to the Sky. That won the book two prize oh in God. 2019. Well, the student reminded me of this character because he took advantage of a situation and... I don't know, kind of destroyed a man because of it. Like, mm. just because he was able to. And I just saw the similarities, even though the student, you know, he I don't know how to say any of the names, <laughs> but the student wasn't the main character. And in John Boyne's book, that character kind of was. So they didn't play the exact same role, but their motive kind of reminded me of 
you know, they kind of seemed the same. Yeah, I mean, well, that's the part that resonated with me is the false accusation mm -hmm. uh, and the damage that I can do to somebody. Mm -hmm. like, regardless of circumstance and time, mm -hmm. saying, like, you know, there's, there's no reason to to make something up about somebody, no matter how you feel. No, about it. it isn't, and that, but that's what happened back in that day. Yeah, and it still because, happens today. Yeah, you can make up stuff about people all the time. It was, yeah, it, it happens, and but it was it was really bad back then. Especially when you had the, sweat, the Salem witch trials, which happened in America uh, 70 years later, uh, where people were if just somebody, no matter what level of sanity they were, if they said, you're a witch, then you would be tried as a witch and executed to be hung or hanged. I liked the student at first. Mm. I thought that, you know, he was going to be a good contribution to the story. I was like, okay, they're going to have a nice mentor pupil relationship and it was going to be a happy story mm. and i was wrong <laughs> yeah, it certainly didn't go that direction no, no. But i realized that it me. wasn't going to be a happy story when i kind of realized that the doctor can't ascend because of his skin color so i was mm. like this is not going to be it's a good, good story well, I, I, liked, I, I enjoyed it and mm. it had like it, i felt it was strange at first like when i started reading it i was reading it aloud to my sisters <laughs> at the dinner table like the day before I actually sat down to actually read it and I was like this is weird like I don't like this but then this morning when I finished it I was reading it all by myself and I was like this is actually really beautifully written like there's a lot of quotes can't remember any offhand but I liked a lot of the little details and I don't know I just enjoyed it and it made me kind of sad that it had a bad ending mm -hmm. I, I think that was what it was set up for, uh, because uh, it's just, the concept is fascinating to have uh, uh, the uh, the folklore of uh, that area, it, it's an area in Croatia, technically. Mm -hmm. The fact that you cut off a, a ham, you cut a hamstring so that the person doesn't turn into a zombie-like, vampire-like, werewolf-like like creature. If they do, they can't yeah. run or move it was, or something. Yeah, it, it, the name of the Stops creature. Stops the wind. I can't yeah. say any of it. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I kind of imagined it more as a werewolf. So. Yeah, I just it, imagined it it's as a werewolf. It's uh, a uh, Vukadlak. Yeah. Yeah. I just pictured a werewolf. Mm -hmm. I pictured a zombie. It, I guess, <laughs> yeah, me too. I, to me, it, remind, it reminds me of I Am Legend, where it seemed like a hybrid of all of them. Uh, but, I, I mean, I yeah. pictured it more like a zombie because they're saying the person came back but without their soul. So it's mm -hmm. the same person's body, just like when they went to go look for that red-headed girl and, you know, they dug up her grave and her body was gone, it would have been her that he, that the student claimed he saw, not <laughs> but mm -hmm. I mean, it could have been a werewolf could have that been. still, I mean, don't they have those modern where everybody's just furry with red hair? So I don't know. I just, I picture mm. a werewolf. But at the uh, same time, right, like, I mean, they do say that. They do say that. They do say that, uh, yeah, there's no soul left in it. Right? But then at the end, he's, he's uh, realizing that he's one of these things. So mm -hmm. it doesn't have the soul or not. And like I said earlier, with the superstition part. And then you say, oh, it's just an old superstition that will one day mm. fade away. But then at the end, he is one. It's like but there's it's, inconsistencies. But it also, it also seemed like it had a, uh, a, a more uh, rational train of thought where a zombie really doesn't have that ability to think. Mm. A zombie is just a body. A, a body, just the only thing it thinks is brains. Brains. Uh, mm. Vampires, it depend, vampires and werewolves, it all depends, because they've been written so many times. Yeah, but I'm just talking about the rules Zombies that they too, set up in its own universe. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, what they said about this, these creatures. They said it's soulless. They said the soul's mm -hmm. gone. That's why I was yeah. thinking that he didn't actually turn into one. I was just thinking that, like, maybe as he was dying, he had that realization. That well, I, like, I was thinking the more Maybe like, I am one only because they see me as a monster, and mm -hmm. now I am a monster. I, I took it more like he was proven wrong, mm. kind of, because he was fighting, no, 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 this thing doesn't exist, and then he himself becomes one, and it's kind of like, you know, an oh shit kind of moment. Well, I guess I, like, I made a mistake, I was wrong, you know, maybe I did turn this woman into one of them, and none of this was a lie. Mm. 
that's kind of how I took it. Yeah, it's like he believes in these things, right? I mean, he, he believes that what he's doing is actually serving a purpose and it's not a superstitious thing. Mm. But he just believes that he never, ever missed, never made a mistake. Mm. That's uh, that's the part of the story, too, that uh, seems a little ridiculous well, to me. he cut his hamstrings before he committed suicide? Yes. Mm -hmm. his so then, yeah, so, I mean, and again, I'm just, just to kind of reiterate where it's like, maybe those things probably don't exist, and he's just kind of doing a personal reflection mm. of, like, I'm dark-skinned, I can't ascend higher, because they see me as this terrible being. Yeah. And inside, I guess I'll always be a terrible being because of how they've portrayed me. Oh, he says, Which, I made a mistake, is what he said. That's the, yeah, the last one. So I don't know where you're getting all that. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I, I feel like, because I feel like he didn't have any, any choice to be in where he was. Mm -hmm. He had to be there. Mm. Because of his skin color, he couldn't ascend. So here he's sitting there, or... If, if you have an entire society sitting there saying, you can't do that, you can't do that because you're you're a different person. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't do these things, you're different. Well, then, you know, his dying thought is going to be like, huh, maybe I really am different. Mm. Like, he's just going he's to accept to believe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even when he's trying to prove it, so maybe his mistake was committing suicide because, like, huh, maybe I should have just accepted that and lived on. I mean, but, his family was fully willing to yeah. accept everything. So, I mean, I'm not saying that it's right what society did and what the position that put him in, but, I mean, I feel like, you know, the mistake could have been anything. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of how society treated him, um, pushing him to suicide over a kid's prank or a lie or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not really his fault. His mistake mm -hmm. could have been anything. Yeah. Would it mm -hmm. that way? I mean, you're right. But the, the adults in that community are the ones that are at fault then because, uh, but they're the ones that say that uh, they're going to outcast him automatically just because of his background. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what they're taught. They're pretty much, uh, he's, it really doesn't matter because he's subhuman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have any final thoughts? I've never read a short story in my life before this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should say that. And I like, I don't know. I I enjoyed it when I was reading it aloud to my sisters. I was like, "This is the weirdest freaking thing I've ever read." You never like, you never you, read them in high school. I mean, I I look at girls. <laughs> that was weird. Hey, how is that possible? <laughs> some book <laughs> girl diary never read a short story. Uh, it's so weird. I'm yeah. sure I have in school, but when you're doing it for an assignment, it kind of doesn't hit you the same. No. So I don't kind of count it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've never read a short story on my own accord. Gotcha. So when I was reading it aloud to my sisters. I was like, mm, this is weird, I don't like it. But then when you read things in your head, it just is different and it sounded, like I said before, like poetic at times. And it did make me see short works in a different light. Like, just because I've been avoiding them this whole time doesn't mean that there's actually not good ones that can make you think and hold meaning and lessons out there. I've just mm -hmm. never done it before. So it was kind of an eye-opener and mm -hmm. I really enjoyed reading it. I wanted to finish it. And I did. <laughs> what matters. Yeah. That's what they're supposed to do. I've learned a lot since joining this. <laughs> <laughs> that is excellent to hear. <laughs> if you're interested in checking this out and some other uh, American short stories uh, from last year, here is the copy. Best American Short Stories 2019. Thank you for tuning into this video. Be sure to join us next time. And for now, keep reading. Hi there, this is Josh, and on the Season 12 finale of Literary Gladiators, Larry, Jesse, Dominica, and I will be discussing The Meadow Mouse by Theodore Retke. Uh, if you like what you see, uh, please support us on Patreon, for the money that we make from you, the patron, allows us, the content creator, to provide you with more exciting content. Thank you for tuning in, and for now, Keep reading.